Okay. So today we are hosting Hannah, the founder of Organize for Health. She is a professional home organizer who helps you transform your home into an oasis of calm. She has a background as a health and wellness coach um, who was led to recognize the importance of our home environments. So decluttering and letting go is a way of clearing space and inviting in the energy that supports your goals. As you let go of the stuff that's extraneous and likely holding you back, you give yourself permission to focus only on what is truly important to you. So with that type of intro, with no further ado, Hannah, please take it away. Hi, everyone. It is great, great to be here. And I'm super excited to talk to you all about the power of decluttering your life and focusing on what is most important. So yeah. Is there more that you want me to start out with or should we dive into questions? Yeah. So thank you so much, Hannah, for joining us tonight. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to ask you a quick question. Can you share the inspiration behind starting Organize, Organize for Health and how your background in health and wellness influence your approach and home of organization? Absolutely. So yes, I have been a health and wellness coach and nutritionist, personal trainer for four years. And recently I made the transition to home organizing. I decided to name my business Organize for Health because there is such an overlap between how our homes support our behaviors and our lifestyles and how all of that affects our health. So as I was coaching my clients, through lifestyle changes, focusing on health and wellness, a lot of what we would talk about is like, how does your home supporting these environments? How's the space that you actually spend a lot of time in supporting those habits for you? So for instance, like your kitchen is going to affect how you eat, your kitchen and your pantry set up. The uh, sort of the zones that you have in your house is your bedroom calm so that it's going to be supportive of your sleep. Is your home in and of itself stressful for you because of how cluttered it is or that it's dysfunctional or does it help you feel calm and relaxed so those are some of the overlaps but there's a ton of overlaps between health and how your home functions actually to to tie into that and hopefully expand on that a little bit more how do you believe a well organized home environment can impact one's mental and physical health because i know yeah. As ladies are all trying to do all that we can. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So let's break it down, actually. So I sort of left off talking maybe more about our mental health, which is, you know, we can talk about stress, but we can also talk about the flip side of that, which is feeling like energized and productive, not feeling too stressed out, feeling more calm. And our homes go a long way in supporting and influencing that. So, you know, to dive further into this, let's say that you work at home, you're going to be spending the majority of your time in that space. Does your home office actually support your goals that you have for yourself in your career? You know, do you have visualizations around your office that your home office that feel inspiring to you? Can you actually like even down to like climate control? Do you have plants in your office? All those tiny details actually add up to having a really great mental space. And so I'm using home office as an example here, but anything in your home that is causing you stress is something that you could focus on changing in some small way. So I don't do any kind of home renovations. I really just focus on what changes we can do in the space that you have. Because typically, especially if you've been living in your home, you're so used to how it works for you that you haven't necessarily considered what are the other ways of functioning? Is there a different way of establishing the flow in your home or even how you're storing your items? And, you know, maybe when you unpacked, you just sort of put things in the nearest space and you haven't really reassessed. Should this thing or this collection of things really be in this room? Does it, is it more appropriate in another room? So questions like that are some of the questions that I go through with my clients when we are thinking about their spaces. And then as far as physical health, you know, a really good example is when we try to get healthy, we often focus on exercise and nutrition. 
One of the other things that as a health coach, I always emphasize is sleep. So exercise, nutrition, sleep. We just talked about stress a little bit. All four of those super, super important in fostering a balanced and healthy lifestyle. So let's go through those. If you have a pantry and a kitchen that actually make you want to prepare food, you're much more likely to eat the foods that you know are going to be supportive to you. You're, the way that you organize that is actually important too. So there's a sort of a, an idea called stimulus control. And it's fairly simple. It's just what we have easy access to, what's right in front of us, we're more likely to interact with. If we make something that is a little bit tougher to access or get to, we're going to interact with it less. So simple concept here, but when you're applying it in your home and sticking with this example of kitchens and pantries, let's say that you have all of the fresh produce front and center. You, you move even the shelves in your refrigerator so that your fresh produce is the first thing that you see. So that's going to be what you grab. So you can do things like that in your home to support the types of foods that you want to be eating. And then when it comes to your kitchen and cooking, there's so much that you can do as far as making the utensils that you use, the small kitchen appliances that you use, things that make it faster to prepare dinner. Are those things really easy for you to access? Are they easy to clean? What's your dishwasher situation? Like there's so many details that you can get into with that. So that's nutrition. For exercise, you know, if you're someone that doesn't go to the gym and you prefer to work out at home, I am one of those people. Do you have easy access to a space in which it is conducive for you to move your body? Are you actually incorporating some body movement throughout your day? How does your home support that? Uh, one Another easy way of doing some stimulus control around this is do you have workout clothes easily accessible? Is that something that you have to like paw through your drawers to get to that favorite pair of shorts that you like to wear? Or is it going to be really easy for you to grab it? Some people set this out the night before. So ideas like that all go into supporting yourself in your own personal wellness goals and therefore strategizing around how your house is organized to even further support that. Wow, that was very good inform information. Uh, so this kind of ties in with this question that I have for you. It's like, what are some common challenges people face when trying to declutter their home and how do they help? How do you help them overcome these obstacles? Yeah, for sure. So a common challenge here is not knowing where to start. And there's a couple ways of approaching this. If you are overwhelmed by most spaces in your home, it's probably going to be tough to decide where to begin. A question that I like to ask is, is there a space that is working well for you? Is there a room in your home that you do actually think functions well? And to say, okay, we can cross that one off the list for now. We'll come back around to it later. But also using those lessons of how that room functions and why to then apply it to the other spaces in your home. So knowing where to start is one. I always recommend starting small. Sometimes we will pick a room, even a bathroom is a great place to start because it is still a confined space. You're not gonna be running into super sentimental items in your bathroom, most likely not. <laughs> and you're probably going to have much more practical mindset when it comes to your bathroom. So bathroom is a good place to start in your home if you're really dreading this decluttering process. When it comes to actually purging your items and letting go of them, that is definitely a challenge. And when you are decluttering, it is going to be emotional. And it should be. These are items that we have collected over our lifetime. They have memories attached to them. Now, that being said, some things we keep because we feel guilty or obligated. So these are things like it was given to us as a gift. Uh, it was something that had sentimental value that maybe it was a project that you wanted to really do and you never got around to it. These items we keep more so out of a sense of obligation or guilt than out of any kind of a sense of purpose or fulfillment. 
So this is an area that, and yes, I see in the chat that when we spend money on things, we associate how much did it cost when we are considering getting rid of it. And I'm really glad that this person brought that up because it leads into what's called the sunk cost fallacy. So this can apply to anything that you have invested in that can be money. So the actual dollar cost, it can be time you've invested, or it can be emotion that you've invested into something. And so what, whatever that is, you know, some examples would be like, maybe you really wanted to get into learning the piano and you just never got around to it, but you have a keyboard and you have all these music sheets, but you haven't touched it. And you probably know that you're not going to get back to it. That is an example of the sunk cost fallacy where we keep it because we feel like, oh, I've invested so much in it. I have to keep it. But the fallacy is it's not serving you anymore. And in fact, if anything in your home is making you feel that sense of guilt or shame, it's likely making your home even harder to live in. It is contributing more to those negative emotions than it is to looking towards the future and to the, in who you are now and who you want to be. So yes, the sunk cost fallacy is a big one. <laughs> And often, if I'm coaching a client through this, it just takes some questions and it takes getting really honest with yourself about how is it really serving you if you were to keep it and how would you feel if you were to let it go? So, yeah, that's, that's where we get to when we are doing an audit of all of the belongings in our homes. We're going to run across things that are sentimental. We're going to ru run across things that we've invested in that we still keep. And we have to deal with those. Those are essentially just delayed decisions. And so when you're decluttering your home, it's a lot of decisions, which is why it can get pretty tiring. And that's also a suggestion that I make is that it takes as long as it takes. Any small step forward is still a step in the right direction. Don't overwhelm yourself because you're just going to keep kicking that can down the road. So small steps, every small step forward is a step in the right direction. Hallelujah. It feels like I need to go on a journey with you throughout my entire house. Um, but I'm, I'm sure this is going to be on, on more people's mind. Would you have a wonderful example that you can share of a client transformation that stands out to you where, you know, decluttering or organizing has significantly improved their quality of life? Yeah, absolutely. So I worked with a, a client. We ended up doing his entire apartment. It wasn't a very big apartment, but we touched each space. So we had a home office, a bedroom, kitchen, living, small dining room, and he was one of those people that really hadn't fully unpacked when he moved in. And then he had some boxes shipped over. Those boxes were not unpacked. That is not uncommon at all. So a lot of us do that. Life gets busy. And if it's in a box and you can't see what's in it, you're not going to really remember what it is. You're just going to be like, well, it was important at some point. So I'm sure I kept it for a reason. And that's how we justify keeping all these things around. So specifically with this client for, for health, how it impacted his health was in two ways. So starting in the kitchen, he was someone who wanted to cook more at home, but his kitchen was really cluttered. And what we discovered was he would place a lot of things on the surfaces. That is super common. A surface area is really easy for us to put things down, prepare, put things down again. His cupboards and drawers were not as well utilized. So some cupboards, some drawers were even completely empty. That's also not uncommon. Some people are much more visual organizers. And if something is behind a door or inside a drawer, they just don't think about it. And that's really common. And it's something to take into account. So what we ended up doing in his kitchen, and this might sound strange, but we ended up taking his cabinet doors completely off. Obviously, we left the drawers as is because you can't do the same thing there. But we took the cabinet doors completely off so he could actually see and use what was in those cabinets. And 
he was renting, so we couldn't do any kind of, you know, create open shelving in the kitchen. You can absolutely do that if you have the budget and if you want to transform your kitchen, you know, go open shelving. If you find that you're less likely to open drawer doors and go looking for things, then open shelving might be a better option for you. So that's what we did in his kitchen. We also threw away a lot of expired food. <laughs> and this is super common as well. So once you throw away what you're no longer using, you suddenly end up with so much more space. We also created solutions so that he didn't have the same habit of just placing something on the countertop. So we put the paper towel roll onto the wall so it's not sitting on the countertop. Little things like that actually go a long way. And then in the bedroom, so I was talking about sleep earlier as something that's super important for our health. Sleep is something that I personally emphasize and then I emphasize to all of my clients. It is one of the most underrated aspects of our health, I would say. So just a little side note here. If you are compromising on your sleep to make room for your gym routine, just consider maybe rearranging that relationship. So sleep is super, super important. For this client, there was a lot of laundry all over the bedroom. Super common also for a lot of us, right? Closets are usually right off of our bedrooms. We have clean clothes. We've got dirty clothes. We've got clothes we've worn once or twice that aren't really ready for the laundry, but we're too lazy to hang them back up. So we needed to come up with a solution here that would create a much more peaceful bedroom environment. So the main goal here was to get the laundry and clothing back into the closet and out of the bedroom space. <clears throat> so we did that by creating a just wall hook system for all the clothes that are worn once and not really ready to be washed. So they can go on hooks. They have an actual home versus being thrown on the back of the couch or elsewhere. And then making it a lot more space in his closet. The closet had become the storage room, not for clothing. <laughs> so we needed to rearrange that, make room in the closet for the clothes again. And then we did a lot of reassessing because he is more of a visual organizer. So we talked a lot about like what clothing makes sense to put in the drawers in the armoire versus what clothes make more sense to hang. And so there was a little bit of switcheroos that we did with that too. Ultimately, what we created for him was a much easier system of managing his clothing and his laundry, which meant the bedroom was really just for sleeping. We made sure he had a nightstand that worked best for what he needed. It was simple, had everything that he needed. He also had sleep apnea, so it's really important that you have access to the CPAP machine right there. That means you're going to use it more. It means you're going to get better sleep. In addition, we also installed blackout curtains in his bedroom. So that is something to definitely consider if you're someone who struggles with sleep. We don't really notice how much light we are actually seeing, even if our eyes are closed. So if you're someone who struggles with sleep, consider blackout curtains, consider an eye mask, consider earplugs, consider it all, because you may be someone who just benefits from having much more of a calm, quiet, dark environment to sleep. So I know that was a long explanation, but this, this really did transform his lifestyle and the way that he functioned in his home. And to go back to my previous point, we didn't all do, we didn't do all of this in like one weekend. We did it over the course of about three months where we transformed his home. And that resulted in many, many bags of trash and many bags of donations. So a lot of things that we can get rid of. I actually see in most of my clients' homes that they can get rid of about half or more of the belongings that they're currently holding on to. And that's not like half of your belongings that are like perfectly good uh, would work if you plugged it in today. It's because we hold on to things that aren't functional anymore. So we have things that are expired. We have things that are obsolete. We have things that were given to us and we never used. So there's a lot that is taking up space in our home, valuable space, that if we really went through and got honest with ourselves, we could probably get rid of half of it.
Wow. <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, so she li loves to take massive action. What are some tips or strategies you would recommend for the ladies to start their decluttering journey right now? Yes. So if anybody's feeling extra inspired by this, go ahead and grab your purse. Or if you're sitting at your desk, get prepared because let's do something right now. <laughs> I know the ladies that were on before now are all prepared because they knew this was coming, but give yourself some time. I'm not going to dive right into it. If you need 20 seconds to go grab your bag, go do it because our bags, especially as ladies, we like to carry our lives around with us. We don't always have those deep pockets that the guys get in their clothing. <laughs> so we collect a lot of things in our purses and in our bags. And if you're not someone that has a big bag, you probably have a lot either in your car or in another area where you go to and from your house. So as you're going through your bag, start by looking for any obvious trash and everyone carries around trash with us. We don't do it intentionally, but we've got like that candy bar wrapper, the gum wrappers, those receipts that we haven't thrown out, that lip gloss that's been dried up for months. Like all of these things can actually be easily thrown away and it's going to create an automatic room for more space. <laughs> the other thing to look at in your purse is really anything that doesn't belong there. So anything that you've been carrying around with you that you're, you're actually realizing like, oh, maybe this should actually stay in my car rather than in my bag. Because every time I'm trying to drive, I'm searching through my bag while I'm trying to keep my eyes on the road. <laughs> maybe there's something in there like that. If you have time to get into your wallet, where all of your credit cards are, maybe you've collected some business cards, maybe you have an old or expired ID, Maybe you have old or expired membership cards, uh, you know, club cards, anything, an old insurance card. <laughs> we hold on to these things because we're not always thinking about how we have to get rid of them. So a purse is a great way to start. And hopefully, I would love to call on anyone who's been doing this to tell me some of the things that they've noticed that they're carrying around with them. <laughs> I have like 20 lip glosses. I don't think I need all 20, right? I just need one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you have an abundance or duplicates of something, I like to say, pick your favorite, start with your favorite, and then make sure that one stays in your bag. And then the rest, that's up to you. You have to decide, do you need 20 lip glosses in your life ever? Or are you someone that really loves lip gloss? I'm not here to judge. Like maybe you do need 20 lip glosses, but if some are like really similar in color or if some are really old, you can probably make some, you can uh, cut down on that collection probably. All right, in the chat, someone says, stack of documents needing to be filed. Yes, makeup subscriptions. A bunch of hair ties. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And documents needing to be filed, that is also an, a common one that falls into the category of something that is not in the area that it ultimately needs to end up in. And so for this person, you know, maybe the documents start out in their purse because they're in transition. So we need some kind of a drop zone so that those documents ultimately end up where they need to be. And this can be expedited by either creating a station that's very obvious, somewhere where the documents can be dropped as soon as you walk in the door, so they're not in the purse anymore. Or it can be like a reminder that you set on your phone for like every month, you need to go through those documents and make sure they get filed. Um, there's no wrong way to do this here, but whenever you start to realize when you're carrying things around that you don't need to, how could you create a system that would work better for you?